Hello and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Anne Kruijt and I'm the host for today's talk. If you're participating in a live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation. And then we'll have time to address these questions once the presentation is complete. Today's speaker is Emmanuel Dudiak. Emmanuel is a postgraduate student and junior researcher at the Dar es Salaam University College of Education. His research focuses on African languages, particularly Datoga, uh, and mainly in the areas of social linguistics and ethnolinguistics. Please join me in welcoming Emmanuel today as he gives his talk, The Impact of Multilingualism on the Existence of the Datoga Language. Hello, I'm Emmanuel Dudiak. I'm a postgraduate student in University of Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam University College of Education. I'm a junior researcher and I'm here to present to you the impact of multilingualism toward the existence of the Toga language. In this short paper, I want to introduce you the concept of this paper regarding the Datoga and their language and the existence of their language within the contact of the Toga people and the other non-Datoga ethnic groups. This presentation assess the impact of multilingualism, as I said, on the existence of the Toga and their language. The main focus of this paper is the Buradiga subsection variety of the Toga. The language is, is spoken in Igunga district in Tabora region. Specifically, the Buradiga word of Igunga district is the focus area. In this word, the Datoga speakers interact with the Sukuma people. In other words, they are living together. And therefore, the language interact. Other ethnic groups in the world of Itumba in Igunga district are Nilamba and Isanzu although they are few with less influence on the Datoga. The language used in Itumba, there are three languages which are commonly used, which is Datoga, Sukuma, and Swahili. Specifically, Sukuma is the lingua franca lingua franca of the area. So almost all the Toga speakers command Sukuma too, and not the other way around, as Sukuma do not master the Toga. So this is an interesting topic to see why the Toga they command the Sukuma, and why the Sukuma they don't master the Toga. Again, the Swahili language is the language of education, where it is only used in classroom situations and in few conversation with people who do not master the Toga. Swahili also used in communication in official government activities And in a commercial basis, the language of Kiswahili is highly valued, but the Toga, they don't master Kiswahili compared to Sukuma. The Toga is highly valued. They value their language and themselves, they respect and they see that their language is very useful for their daily life 
and transfer this language from generation to generation. The language is used in all home and household domains. It is also used in all the toga meetings, rituals, and all other cultural activities. Although pupils are taught Swahili in schools, at home and in other social activities, they are in, discouraged from using the language. They are prohibited to speak Kiswahili in their homes and other gatherings of the Datoga people. Now the question is, why Sukuma? Why the Toga, they know how to speak Kisukuma? So we can say they learn Sukuma as their long term neighbors, and they, in some instances, depend on Sukuma. They depend on Sukuma in several cases, like trade and businesses, and other factors which cause them to depend on, the, on Sukuma. The interaction between the Toga and Sukuma has led to borrowing of various linguistic elements into the Toga. So if you go to the Toga houses or compounds, you may find that in the Toga languages, some of the terms are borrowed from Sukuma language. Secondly, they also learn Sukuma as a way of containing them and security wise as it makes it easy to understand their plans in times of tribal conflicts. And the Toga also, they are proud that Sukuma, they don't command their language. So it is easy for the Toga to know the Sukuma language for the security wise, especially when there is a conflict between those tribes. Now, what's the impact of the multilingualism in the Toga? The Toga language has been viewed as an inferior language being used only in domains that concern the Datoga people. That means this inferior language, we can ask ourselves, it can be a debate. This language, which is inferior, within the Datoga of Itumba in Igunga's district. We can ask ourselves, will it exist or will be slowed by the Sukuma language? So borrowing of the linguistic terms from both Swahili and Sukuma may bring to the Toga language being a minor language or it will end up with the death of the Toga language. This is the question of debate to be discussed today or later on. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you very much, Emmanuel, for your presentation. I think we can now begin the question and answer section.
If anyone would like to ask a question or offer a comment, you can do so using the Zoom chat module. Uh, and I will start with one question of my own to give the other participants some time to write. Uh, and the question I have of my own is, uh, you say that there uh, is some various boring of uh, linguistic elements from Sukuma into uh, into Datsoka. Uh, so do you only see that with lexicon or also with grammatical structures? Yeah, you know that to answer your question, I can say both lexical and grammar. Okay, do you have any examples of what kind of grammatical features might be there? They, is it more like grammatical elements or do you say actually sentence structures or I'm not sure if you know, but do you have any examples? Okay. Maybe at later on, I will give you some of the examples when we are continuing with the, the discussion. Okay, thank you. Then I'll move on to the chats where I can see uh, a question from Richard Griscom. He says, thanks for this talk, Emmanuel. Do you know if the Sukuma and Datoga in that area of the uh, Buradiga have always had good relations? Maybe in the past they were not friendly. Do you think their relationship has changed over time? For the past couple of years, there was a tribal conflict between those tribes. I mean, Datoga, the Buradiga subsection and the Sukuma. And the conflict was based on the uh, kettles. But for the time being, they are living as a friends. They are living as a neighbors. But still the toga they have on their mind, maybe one day if there is a conflict which can be raised by the either Sukuma or the toga. So their language will be the weapon to defend themselves. All right, thank you. And I have a follow-up question on that by Andrew Harvey. Um, so he says, as a follow-up on Richard's question, what do we know about the human history of the area? How long have the Datoka lived in this area? And how long have the Datoka and Sukuma lived together here? Okay, it's a good question again. I have no real data, but uh, in, if we refer history, it seems that the, the Itumba is the original land of the Toga. Since I can say 20 or even before the 20th century, but later on, 70s to 80s, the Sukuma came from the western part of Igunga, which means Tabora and Shinyanga and they came to live together with the Datoga because of the nature of the area, because the land was uh, very fertile for the agriculture. So in short, I can say the Sukuma, they came to, to the area which is accommodated or uh, controlled by Datoga, which means Buradiga. I have a comment from Richard Griscom. Um, he says, I don't know how much about Sukuma, but I do know they have a lot of cattle in addition to farming. One thing you could look at is ex any exchange of cattle terminology. Yeah, actually, uh, lexical and uh, grammar borrowing from Sukuma is normally on the food, crops and tubers and not directly to the keto. All right, thank you. Then I have another question from Christian this time. He says, thanks for this talk. Do the Datoka intermarry with neighboring groups? And if they do, to what extent? Is there any schooling according to gender? For example, do more Datoka women marry to outsiders or more men? Yeah, thank you. There is an intermarriage nowadays between Sukuma and the Toga. But the real picture or the real data, it seems, uh, many Sukuma marry the Toga women, but still, 
in a, in a simple research, still the Toga are reluctant to marry Sukuma women. Although there is a few examples when I was there, there are few Sukuma women who have been married by the Toga young men. But the real situation is that Sukuma are easy to marry the Toga women. Um, then Andrew Harvey says, given that you do not have his detailed historical data and you do not have detailed language data to discuss in your current paper today, I want to ask you what data you do have. What data are you basing your talk on today? Uh, did you do personal observation in the field or did you interview the Togo speakers from the area about language use? Okay. Uh, what, uh, what I did, I did a research in the field and I is interviewed the Datoga and the and the, and few Sukuma, but the focus was the language used by the Datoga. Um, so Andrew responds to that, right? So what kind of questions did you ask them? The question is, my question, the questions of interview was, the question number one, uh, is the Toga Mary Sukuma? The other question is, the Toga send their children to school. The other question is, do the Toga speak the Sukuma language at their homes? The other question was, do Sukuma speak the Toga language? And if they don't speak, why? And the Toga, why they master Kisukuma and not otherwise? And the last question is due to the language contact in Itumba area, and the Toga as a minority in Itumba because of the large number of Sukuma, what will be the exist existence of the Toga language? Whether the language will be swept away by the Sukuma or the Toga will stay as a, to resist their language. Those were the question, research questions. All right, thank you. I'll see if, uh, if Andrew has any more questions. I'm sure he's gonna come back to us. Um, Richard Griscom just shared a resource. He says one resource I can share is a dialect survey from uh, from Sil from uh, 1997, which includes the Buradiga, and he uh, attached a Dropbox link. Okay. Uh, yeah, Andrew is back. Uh, he says these are uh, all useful pieces of information. Do you feel like the answers you got from the Datoka speakers were more reflective of the reality of language dynamic in the area? Or do you think it was more reflective of the Datoka speakers language ideology? I think the, the, the question which you ask, the, the, the answer is both either Datoga or Sukuma, I can say. So you feel that the way that they answered your questions um, is also how they actually speak in real life and not just the way that they feel the language should be spoken? Either sometimes the, the, the answer is most of the Datoga, they are not uh, Sometimes they are not uh, they are not free to tell you the reality because of the the notion that the Toga sometimes they are not rely they don't rely from the researchers because maybe they think that 
maybe you will take the information for the sake of maybe for the take their land or their properties so because of the aim of getting information or sources from them sometimes we try to to listen what they are saying so information sometimes they came they, 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 they the information which gave you sometimes is right and sometimes they will not give you the right information but you have to make sure that the information which you get is is a is a is a is a good information that can be useful for the writing the research um okay i've got more from andrew he says, uh, so do you feel like these responses were useful indication of the language dynamic or useful indications of the language ideology of the Stoka speakers? Because the real world language dynamic, whether the Stoka is being pressured by Sukuma, might be different uh, from what the people feel about their languages and how they should be used. Yeah. Yeah, of course this I can, uh, to be honest, I declare interest that this question is very interesting and I cannot assure you that the answers which I will be giving will be the correct one. But in my opinion, I think the language is dynamic. So if the Toga will still in contact with the Sukuma, I have an opinion that the language will be in danger. And he follows that up to ask that if you get a chance to go back, do you have more questions to ask or different types of interviews to hold? For the future research, I think I will change the methodology so as, the, so as to get more deep information from the Toga, especially so as to come with the findings which will be in a, in a, which will bring us to come with the, the conclusion or to come with the data, which one is the right between the language ideology and the language dynamic. Um, Andrew has one more question. Uh, how long did you spend with uh, the Datoga speaker? So how much time did you spend there? Yeah. Personal, personally, I'm living with the Datoga, but as you know, the Toga are divided into several subsections. So for Buradiga, to me, I spent only two weeks in Buradiga area, the language which is not spoken by other Datogas. It's quite different from other section of the Datoga. Andrew says that he's interested in hearing more about your research experience. And I think he's also just asking it like, how did you experience the research while you were doing it? And he comes up with some more questions like, um, how did you connect with these speakers in the area? Okay. Uh, of course. Because I'm not the, the resident or the person of the area. So it takes me time to find people who can, who can help me as the assistant researchers who they can speak Swahili little. And they help me to introduce me to the Datoga or Bradga of Igunga. So this was, that, that was the initiative which I, as I, I take to make that I came to, to interact with the Toga and, and the Buradiga so as to take some kind of uh, research from them. And what was their reaction to you when you first arrived? Of course, the, uh, the reaction of the Toga, always they are reluctant. So, for the first time, they are asking me some question. What are you doing and what do you want to write? What do you want to report? And for the benefit of who? 
if you take this information or report or research, who is going to benefit from this report or this research? So from that corner of the question, I try to solve those questions because of the, the permit which I was given. So at the end of the day, they allow me to conduct the research. Interesting. And did you speak with many Datoga speakers or just a few? I did a research to the few Datoga because I I spend most of the time the sh in a shopping center where at evening and morning hours the Datoga came for shopping. So I meet them there, I conduct research over them there. So the research was directly to the field that took and not more than many people. All right, and um, so Andrew comes back to ask, um, so what did you tell them when uh, you were describing the work that you do in your research? How did you explain? Uh, of course, I told them that this is the academic work so I'm not going to report to anyone and their name will not be reported or will not be written in my report. So it's a just academic research that will give me some more credits in my studies or in, uh, in my academic curriculum vitae. Mm -hmm. And he also asked, according to your observations, did the uh, uh, Buridiga people live very traditionally by the Toga standards, or did they live a more modern lifestyle? Yes, the answer is that the Buridiga of Igunga or Itumba world, they are still living in a traditional life. Even though there's other ethnic groups who are interacting with them, still the Toga or Buradiga observe their culture, their language, their tradition and way of life. Even if today their children are attending the school, but they are still observe their traditional way of life even Christianity or religious practices, the modern or Western Christianity, most of them, they are not ready to accept Christianity. And he follows up to ask, in that traditional lifestyle, um, were there traditions similar to the Datoga that you are familiar with, or are their practices different to other Datoga groups? Yes, of course, the, the Toga generally, uh, they define in, a, in practices, in life or tradition practices. So, Buradiga, they practice their traditions and way of life quite little different from the other the Toga who I'm aware of. Like, for example, celebrating uh, the, the, the celebra celebration of the, uh, the dead, the elder, the elder who dies and they have to celebrate for him. If you compare with the other Datoga, there is some elements of differences. Um, so thank you. Uh, I think those are all the questions and comments for today. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all of the presentations in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page and entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley Bibliography. Looking ahead, the next presentation in the webinar series will be given on Wednesday, July 1st by Helen Eaton and it's titled Plurality and Pluractionality in Sandawi Verbs. I would like to thank Emmanuel again for his presentation and of course everyone else for participating today and I hope to see you again at our next webinar.